हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे विल स्टार्ट द डायनेमिक्स पोर्शन ऑफ मैकेनिक्स एंड इन द डायनेमिक्स पोर्शन प्रोबेबली द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टॉपिक इज लीनियर मोशन सो जनरली अदर्स फील दैट इट इज द मोस्ट सिंपल बट आई डोंट थिंक दैट इट इज अ लॉजिकल टॉपिक सो हियर वी मस्ट नो एक्जैक्टली इन विच प्रॉब्लम वॉट वी हैव टू डू सो इनिशियली लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ अ लीनियर मोशन एंड दैट टू ऑल्सो कॉन्स्टेंट एक्सेलरेशन मीन्स in the linear motion when motion is in a straight line that is called as linear motion and if acceleration remains constant then what we have to do if a is equal to constant if a is equal to constant either it will be straight way mentioned or if some value of a is given then in that case you have to solve the problems by using equations of motion kinematic equation v is equal to u plus at s is equal to U T plus half A T square and V square is equal to U square plus twice A S and I feel all the students know these three equations. But using these three equations in a correct way, it is very 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 important. And generally in a linear motion, when object is dropped or if it is thrown vertically upward, then that is also linear motion. and it is treated as motion under gravity so there what will happen only this a you have to replace it by a motion under gravity motion under gravity means something is dropped thrown vertically upward or thrown vertically downward so it comes under this then here only from this three equation we have to replace a by plus or minus g and g is going to be always if it is not mentioned always you take 9.81 meters per second square so when g is plus and when it is minus if anything which is thrown upward then in that case g is going to be minus and if it is thrown downward or dropped then a is going to be plus g so with this basics i'll explain few examples how to solve by using equations of motion but remember that if acceleration is constant only you use three equations in the students mind always they are having some wrong thinking dynamics means these three equations it is not like that in linear motion only in case of constant acceleration we have to use these three equations then i'll show the examples how the examples are going to be there especially in the dynamics you take enough time to understand the problem so for example this problem is what so this problem is a ball is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 80 meters per second from the base of the 50 meter high tower determine the distance h by which the ball clear the top of the tower also determine the time of the travel when it reaches the base again means try to understand neatly the problem so here ball is thrown vertically upward means linear motion with an initial uh, velocity of 80 meters per second means u is going to be 80 meter per second in vertically upward direction and height of the tower height of the tower is tower is h t height of the tower is 50 meters it is 50 meters determine the distance h by which the ball clears the top of the tower means actually what we have to do how much maximum height this ball will attain and that height minus height of the tower will give us h means let us consider h is the height above the tower then that like this we can calculate at the same time what is asked also determine the time of the travel when it reaches the base again and total time of travel it is asked then now see it one thing is fixed it is the problem of constant acceleration we can use the equation of motion and again if we throw something vertically upward then because of acceleration it is going to be negative in upward direction somewhere it will stop that is the de acceleration somewhere it will stop and at that moment it will reach the maximum height maximum height means at h max v is going to be zero 
at h max v is going to be 0 then which equation you can use v square is equal to u square minus 2 g h max h max and at maximum height this v is going to be 0 it is going to be 0 square it is going to be 80 square minus 2 into 9.81 into h max means from this we will get h max and that h max we can calculate like this a t square divided by 19.62 326.1 or 2 meters 326 point two meters this is the maximum height attained but what we need above the 50 meter tower how much h is there means this h will be what the required h is going to be h max minus height of the tower so it is going to be 326.2 minus 50 so the h whatever is asked that is going to be minus 50 276.2 276.2 meters so this is one answer h we can calculate like this so if we understand problems are very easy then second is what <coughs> when it reaches when you are throwing from the bottom and when it reaches to the ground what is the height how much time it takes then that also how we can calculate you can use the second equation h is equal to ut minus half gt square then see when you are throwing upward and reaching at the same place h is going to be zero h is going to be zero then again so it is going to be u is going to be a t this is t minus half into 9.81 t square this t and this square will get cancelled it will get cancelled and will get t is equal to t is equal to a t into 2 160 by 9.81 16.31 seconds this much time it will need second so this is the total time of travel which is asked means if you read the statement carefully these two answers are uh, means these two answers are expected so like this simply by using wisely these equations you can solve the problem of linear motion now we'll see the second example also <clears throat> second example is what a stone is dropped from the top of a tower 50 meter high at the same time another stone is thrown up from the foot of the tower with a velocity of 25 meters per second at what time at what distance from the top from the top and after how much time the two stones cross each other means actually try to understand this example from a 50 meter high tower means height of the tower is how much 50 meter so i will write ht 50 meter so uh, so this is the problem of two stones so let us consider first stone is dropped means u1 when dropping is there u1 is going to be 0 0 meters per second and <coughs> at the same time another stone is thrown up from the foot of the tower u2 u2 is going to be 
25 meters per second in upward direction. In the upward direction. And at what distance from the top of the ta tower and after how much time the two stones cross each other. Then one thing, see that let us consider after time t. Let us consider after time t, uh, these two stones are crossing each other. Means you can write in the answer, consider, consider after time t, after time t, means this time will be same for both the stones, time t, uh, two stones, two stones cross each other cross each other then see in this time t whatever the distance moved by both means h1 in downward direction and h2 in upward direction of the second stone it must be equal to what it must be 50 meters because this tower is 50 meter high then h1 is what u u1 u1 t and it is dropped plus half g t square time is t only and as per the h2 is concerned again u2 into t u2 into t time is same and it is thrown vertically upward half g t square is equal to 50. This problem becomes very simple because plus half gt square minus half gt square it will get cancelled. And this u1 is so these two terms will get cancelled. u1 is 0, 0 into t plus 25, 25 into t, 25 into t is equal to 50. Means t is equal to 2 seconds after 2 seconds after 2 seconds these two stones will cross each other means after 2 seconds stones cross each other cross each other so either this right or you can avoid so it is more than enough. Now, the second is what? At what distance from the top of the tower? Means from the top of, of the tower, we have considered H1. It is coming down. Means H1 we have to calculate. H1 is what? H1 is going to be. Huh. H1 we have to calculate. H1 is going to be U1 t plus it is downward half g t square and how we can calculate this this is 0 into now time is 2 plus half into 9.81 into 2 square that square and 2 will get cancelled and it is going to be h1 is going to be it is going to be 2, 2 will get cancelled, 2 into 2, 19.62 meters from the top of tower. This is the answer of the second problem. It's easily like this, we can solve the problems of the linear motion. Now we'll see the third example on constant acceleration. A stone thrown vertically upward with 25 meters per second from the top of a 80 meter high tower. Determine the velocity with which it hits the ground and the total time of time required to reach the ground. So first always we must understand this problem itself say thrown vertically upward with 25 meters per second from the top of a 80 meter high tower so first what i'll do so ht height of the tower it is 80 meter 
80 meter and above this the velocity huh, determine is determine the velocity with which it hits the ground and total time of travel total time of travel means what will happen uh, from 80 meter high first stone will go up and then it will come down then it will come down and in that case so when it hits the ground at that time the distance traveled by the stone is going to be minus 80 minus 80 means uh, that velocity we can calculate so <clears throat> first uh, first what we'll do so we'll calculate what is going to be the maximum height it reaches so for that if we use this equation v square is equal to u square u square minus 2g h max 2g h max and uh, velocity at the top it is going to be zero now it is thrown with 25 meters per second means u is going to be 25 meters per second in upward direction minus 2 into 9.81 into h max into h max so from this we can get h max means it is the height above the tower if the height above the tower and it is it is going to be 625 divided by 19.62 it is 31.85 or it is 86 31.86 meters now what is asked from this it is going to it hits the ground it is going to come down then how to calculate it so for that what determine the velocity with which it hits the ground then uh, how we can calculate so right at the top you are knowing or you are knowing the total distance travel total distance traveled is going to be ht plus h max so we can use this equation h is equal to ut plus half gt square let us consider after this time t it reaches it reaches the ground so now total distance traveled is going to be it is going to be 80 plus this 31.86 this is going to be h it is going to be h is equal to initial velocity right from the top when it is going downward it is 0 0 into t plus half into 9.81 t square from this we will get the total time uh, means time from the top to reach to the ground so this time is going to be <laughs> or let us consider this is going to be t2 means from the top to reach to the ground and this t2 time is going to be 8 plus 31 means 80 plus 31.86 divided by 4.09 and whatever the answer is there 22.805 22.805 so it is 4. Point so this time is going to be 4.78 the time is 4.78 seconds so this is the time from the top 
to the ground and to reach the top t1 t1 how we can calculate v is equal to v is equal to u minus g t1 so this is the when i write at the top when velocity is zero so then that time how we can calculate u is 25 minus 9.81 into t1 and t1 is going to be 25 25 by 9.81 it is 2.5 5 it is 2.55 second then what will be the total time total time is going to be t is going to be t1 plus t2 t1 is 2.55 plus t2 is 4.78 4.78 so this time will be seven point three three two seconds. Three two seconds. And second will be what? The velocity with which it hits the ground. For that, again, when it is dropped from the top of a tower, you can use V is equal to u plus gt now it is the downward motion so that's why i am using this plus g v we have to calculate u right at the top initial velocity it is going to be zero plus nine point and this time is going to be t2 actually nine point eight one into t2 four point seven eight that 9.81 into 4.78 46.89 means this is the velocity 46.89 meters per second in downward direction means these are the two answers actually first answer is v and second answer is 7.32 so like this simply by using the equations of motion we can solve any example then one more example we'll see a stone thrown vertically upward comes back to the ground in eight seconds determine the velocity of projection and maximum height attained by the stone so how we can get it so first total time of travel it is 8 seconds and just see that the displacement during this it is going up and coming back so h is going to be 0 then what we'll do h is equal to ut we are throwing up that's why minus minus half gt square correct then <laughs> h is 0 h is 0 u is going to be we have to calculate this is t t also huh, t it is given it is 8 seconds minus half into 9.81 into 8 square actually this 8 and 8 square will get cancel so this 8 and this square will get cancelled then what will be u u is going to be u is going to be it is 4 into 9.81 9.81 into 4 it is 39.24 means 39.24 meters per second with this velocity if 
stone is thrown upward it comes after 8 seconds to the ground so this is the first answer determine the velocity of projection and maximum height attained by the stone for maximum height always you use this equation v square is equal to u square minus 2 gh then now see when this velocity becomes 0 this h becomes h max it is 0 square is equal to 39.24 it square minus 2 into 9.81 into h max see this h becomes h max v becomes 0 then from this the maximum height attained we can get and that will be <laughs> divided by 19.62 only I will suggest you make the calculation twice. So, H max is going to be 78.48 meters. Means like this easily we can deal with the problems of constant acceleration. And definitely such similar problems are going to be there on constant acceleration. Even though it is a logical, it requires thinking. But the advantage is what? Only these three equations. And when motion is upward, G is going to be negative. When it is downward, it is going to be positive. Thank you.